Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Marcus Nordberg, and I'm a proud member of the scientific collaboration that is embarking on a fantastic voyage. The harbor of this adventure is CERN, Geneva, Switzerland, and our flagship is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. It is a particle accelerator that accelerates particle beams in opposite directions and makes them collide head-on. Out of these collisions, we generate new particles, which we detect using large detector systems, and these collisions generate particles that we believe existed just a fraction after the Big Bang some 14 billion years ago. So, why does it matter? Well, you see, there are mysteries. For example, we can only see or measure 3.5% of the mass energy of our universe. So where is the 96.5%? <laughs> In which forms can it be? Imagine, if you were an accountant and you would go to your boss and tell him, I can only record 3.5% of the assets of our company. <laughs> well, either your firm is some sort of a market leader in the tacit knowledge economy, or it just went bankrupt. So we don't know. We don't actually know what mass or matter is. Where did it come from? Are we possibly missing something here? Could it be that there are some extra hidden dimensions that hide away the stuff? Or do we, live in, do we actually live in parallel universes? Can we ever discover these worlds? Maybe. Maybe. You see, you have to understand, we are really sailing in uncharted waters. Remember Christopher Columbus? He set out his sails to discover new and profitable trading routes to India. Well, guess what happened to him on his way to the bank? So, it is important to explore the unknown. That process generates new data, it generates new information and new knowledge. That will be useful also for other people. My economist friends refer to gift economy or knowledge economy to describe the types of benefits that basic research, such as ours, will generate to our society in the long run. But in short, it's, an, it's about investment for our future. I'd love to talk more about the physics of what we do at CERN, but alas, I can't do that now. Instead, what I would like to talk about today is the nature of scientific collaboration and why that matters. I work for ATLAS. ATLAS is one of the four large experiments at the LHC. How did we build it? Well, ATLAS is the size of a seven-story building. It's about 100 meters below ground level. It has about 10, 20 million components, as many as an Eiffel, uh, sorry, as many as an aircraft carrier. It weighs about 7,000 tons, as much as the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It has about 3,000 kilometers of cable crisscrossing all over the place. It has about 100 kilometers of piping, all sorts of gas, cooling, ventilation, and so on. It has four to five million lines of computing code. It's complex! <laughs> to explain to you what it actually does and what it's capable of doing, think about your digital camera, okay? Now, your camera is able to take a picture, say, once a second, with a resolution of, say, seven megapixels. Well, Atlas is a digital camera that takes pictures 40 million times a second of these particle collisions with a resolu resolution of about 100 megapixels. Now, if that were music, that will fill your iPods in one-tenth of a second, and it would spit out DVDs every, you know, like one, two seconds. And if Atlas were 
a telescope, in terms of the de detection accru accuracy, and we would turn it towards the stars, we could actually see uh, one grain of sand on Neptune. It actually took 15 long years to build Atlas, with a dedication of some 2,500 scientists, engineers, and students from 37 different countries of 70 different nationalities from more than 200, 200 institutes. US is the biggest stakeholder, and we had more than hundreds of companies working closely together. So what is the recipe book like making things like Atlas happen? Well, if you take business management theories, that's very easy. What you do, you first hire, you know, a top gun CEO, a visionary leader, a neutron jack type of a guy, then you make a strategic plan, empower all the people, set up a core management team, centralize all resources, you know, uh, control people top down and bottom, and, and uh, you know, of course, like this, and bang! Make a deal. Well, actually, in the case of Atlas, it didn't happen that way at all. The way it happened was that it started, it's, it started as a potluck lunch party. It did, where volunteering scientists and engineers and technicians chipped in their know-how and their skills to tease out the discovery of the new particles from the underlying physics equations. Everybody agreed to take a share of building the hardware and, and, and software systems. And in our business, the supplier is the customer. And there were no you know, predetermined structures maybe for the admin part. But for the technical people, what they did was the technical teams emerged and rearranged themselves around the core technologies as technological problems emerged. It certainly was a bottom-up and a distributed approach. And we had no hard-nosed CEO. A leader, yes. Peter is a kind, gentle, devoted physicist who would never tell, only kindly ask. He's Swiss, you know. <laughs> so this doesn't sound much of the, like those Harvard Business School case stories, does it? Well, you bet. In fact, it baffles management scholars, at least the ones that I've spoken to, because existing theories tend to assume that all possible outcomes can be determined more or less ex ante, and that there are not too many messy you know, input signals uh, chewing up the big picture. And of course, organization structures usually are assumed to be, uh, you know, you can determine them well ex, ex ante or beforehand, and that their evolution is more or less predictable. Clearly, in the case of Atlas, these assumptions do not hold. So what makes thousands of scientists who don't even know each other to commit themselves for such a common endeavor. Well, several business schools, including Wharton here in the US and IMD in Switzerland, have tried to help us to figure out some answers. And we have identified three key factors. First, vision. Vision to work together to achieve something extraordinary, something out of this world, something so compelling. In the case of us, what would be vision like that would be to find a particle that explains the source of mass or that demonstrate that there is a heavier mirror universe around us. After all, who wouldn't like to be lying under the apple tree when that apple falls down? Second, commitment to contribute. Some of our collaborators have devoted their entire professional careers to help to innovate and solve all the technical problems to make Atlas a reality. It is their passion and it is their devotion to details that has turned the, oh, we can't do this, into the, oh, yes, we can. And in fact, in some countries, that attitude makes even presidents. <laughs> Third, tolerance for individual expression of ideas, a tolerance for freedom. People in Africa or in the United Kingdom may live differently, but that doesn't mean that they can't work together. After all, sharing of ideas is sharing of hearts. Let others give 
give your raw diamond to other people and let them make it shine, and they will do it. Let me illustrate this in a personal way. This is Raphael. Raphael is one of our mechanical engineers. He's French. And he not only has made a major discovery and made a, has not, not alone contributed to Atlas, but he also made a major discovery. You see, Atlas is a complex project, and he was responsible for a joint construction team that came from Pakistan and Israel. These team members didn't know each other beforehand, and they had left their families behind. Raphael explains, the work that we did together was so focused, so intense, that we became the family. We would share stories about our families with each, with, with each other. And Raphael, he would send the teams, to, they, he would take them actually together to, to places like Paris. He would take it to the French, uh, French Alps. He would take them to places that these people had never been before. And here's Raphael's discovery. Through discovering a new world, the team members learned something about themselves. Being different gives you no excuse to fight. And working together is a sign of respect. Say hello to Sandra. Sandra is one of our physicists of Italian origin, and together with her husband, Kevin, and two kids, they moved from the Bay Area several years ago to CERN to help to build Atlas. And her task was to run an installation cable team for one of our sub-detectors. She knew nothing about cables. She said, I was not an expert, I knew nothing, but somebody had to do the job, so I did it. So what she did together with her colleagues from 39 different institutes was to individually label 8,500 cable connectors. And she did this because she said, I wanted a, a dream since 15 years to come true. I wanted to see Atlas ready to take data. And on September 10th last year, that day happened. A dream come true. Katarina, she's a PhD student in Oslo, Norway, of Polish origins. She's a, a physicist who works on distributed computing for the physics analysis, but she's also a nun of the Dominican order. And together with her colleagues, she runs the guest house at the convent. People say at first that they are surprised to hear this, but Katarina says, it's not so strange. It's, it's, it's not about the need to mix the two, but to make the two interact. Katarina believes that it is important for our society to understand what is going on in science today. And she fears that there is an alienation taking place. People work on PCs and people work on mobile phones, but they don't always quite know how they work. And some people turn into mysticism. But science is no more mystical than religion is, she says. Both follow a rational process. You can learn and you need to understand. We all have our different stories and our different passions, but we still all work together and share the same goal. It is people like Raphael, people like Sandra, people like Katarina, that make things like Atlas happen. Because this is what they learn. They learn how to deal with complex problems, highly interconnected problems, and they are able to solve them. So isn't it strange that we don't hear more about scientific collaboration such as Atlas? In my view, we should. Science is really part of our daily lives. My mobile phone, it is based on technologies that result 
or orig originate from quantum mechanics, the very same theory that we use at CERN to discover new particles. In fact, quantum mechanics-based products and services represent about more than one-fifth of our gross national product. It's all interconnected. But ultimately, this is not about us scientists making new discoveries. It's not about us. It's about us. Our societies and our economies are already deeply interlinked. Irrespective of the colors of our skin or irrespective of our religions or our philosophical beliefs or irrespective of where we live and how we work, we got to need to understand and learn how to work together. And not only to solve the present financial crisis, but learn how we can work together. Because this is what Katarina said earlier. You remember, it's not about mixing, it's about engaging. Before I finish, I would like to ask you this. Can we, as a society, afford not to explore the unknown? When I was a small boy, the Apollo moon missions would open a new world of discovery for me. I would gaze at the moon and I would listen to the radio traffic communication between the mission control and the astronauts landing on the moon. I, I can't remember what they said, but I do remember the excitement. I do remember the determination. I do remember the audacity of that adventure. It surely was something out of this world. As it's often said, only a handful of people landed on the moon. For the rest of us, we rediscovered the Earth. I personally believe that scientific collaborations such as ours will take us to new places, will take us to new heights, because, irrespective, because it offers a model. It offers a model how to move forward and work together. And irrespective of what we find, in that process we will learn something new about ourselves. Because that is what science is all about. And that is why scientific collaboration matters. Thank you.